This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, live from Studio B, here's your host, Jerem Jordan and Tyler Haas. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This is Thursday, February 10th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the man who's creating Utah's enunciation guide, Tyler Haas. What's up, Ty? How are we doing, Jerem? little countdown tip-off flavor here. Let's go, baby. It's great. Let's go, man. What do you think of the Utah accent? I think I think it goes unnoticed to Utahns, obviously. Yes, right. That's what an accent is. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's just culture, but yeah. uh, there's definitely an accent, yes. For real. For real. <laughs> Let's read the, a tweet from Joanne Haddon, who has zero followers and zero tweets prior to this. She created this two tweet at BYU TV Sports. This is great. <laughs> While you are talking about pronunciation, I was on Monday, I believe, uh, I would or Tuesday. I would like to let announcers know that steel is not pronounced still. It has a long E in it because they, when there are two vowels together like EA in steel, the first has a long vowel sound. EA is a long E sound. Okay, so then I quoted I this. how as, she spelled that out there. Yeah. I quoted this with, a, you know, an accent. Uh, said, what the hill, you know. So, uh <laughs> Uh, Matt Nielsen says, oh, my heck, I found a real good dill on a delicious mill for real. Uh, though my wife from Utah once told me that whale and well, like the kind you get water out of, were rhyming words. Um, nope. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeff Johnston, I have a good feeling about her tweet. Hema Haymuli, who works here. Psh, for real, though. And then uh, Shlo- <laughs> Sloop Josh B. What's her dill? It's her deal. <laughs> now, I, I, okay, full disclosure here. Is it full disclosure if it's not about me, if it's about someone else? <laughs> ben, ben and Spencer have more of this than I do, and I, I, I would constantly make fun of them initially when we'd have Phil Steele on, because they'd say Phil Still. Phil Still. And I'm like, it's <laughs> Phil Steele. Steel, eel. pronunciate. Eel. What, yeah, what do people call that an, an eel? An yeah. ill? No. Milk? Can't say ill. No, no. Unless unless I, someone's sick. M- it is milk. Let's get this milk. straight. It is no. not milk. Milk. And it is pillow, not pillow. Okay? <laughs> I have the I have this debate yes. uh, almost weekly with my wife. Yes, it is, it is a pillow. Let me give you pillow. this one. We all say marshmallow, but it's an M A. It's a mallow. It's a marshmallow. But no one says marshmallow. No, no one says that. It's like it should it, be mountain, 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 Layton. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun. So for real, here's your show lineup. Ball night in LA for men's hoops. Can we ask for more than a win? Can, or is it just about winning since we always lost four? We'll discuss. Gregor Bell joins us from LA to chat about the Cougs. Ball night as well in Provo for number 20 women's hoops. Sarah Hampson on what this team found in the second half at Gonzaga. Plus 27. Yeah. In the amazing. second half. Woo! And Joe Namath has a comment about Zach Wilson that's kind of weird. But first, here's some headlines, Ty. Men's Hoops is back in action tonight at Loyola Marymount. They'll look to snap their four-game losing streak. The game will be tonight at 11 Eastern on ESPNU and BYU Radio. In Joe Lenardi's latest bracketology yesterday, BYU is part of the last four in as the third-to-last team in the tournament. How do you feel about that? You know what? I think they're that that's right. They should be. They, I mean, they should be in. So they're trending out. They're trending out, yeah. yes. Yeah. They have to have a very strong finish, but right now they're in. Yeah. And if we're talking about pronunciation, you said Loyola. It's Loyola. <laughs> 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 Number 20, women's hoops. So it's Pepperdine tonight, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. The Cougars are 19 and 2, 9 and 1 in the West Coast Conference. Cougars are number 12 in net, and as of two days ago, a six seed in the NCAA tournament, according to ESPN's Charlie Cream. I think we're really hoping this team can climb as high as a five or even a four. I feel like they're a three seed type team though, especially because they've been in the top 20 for the last couple weeks. Six feels a little little low and not in a good way. High. I think so too. A low number is a high seed yeah. in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they're not they're not getting the respect that I think they deserve. That well, the net. Right. Let's go. I mean, they they should be a three or a four. I mean, the way they're playing lately, it's it's amazing what they're doing. They're seriously, probably their best season ever. Ever. This is the best right? regular season team in yeah. history. They can validate that with the postseason run to the Sweet 16. For sure. 
BYU softball starts their season tonight at 8 Eastern, taking on UNLV in Las Vegas. They were ranked number one in the WCC preseason coaches poll, receiving five of six first place votes. Uh, I'll those, read these. Those How are some names. Can you can you help me with Hunter those Alba, names? Hunter Marissa Chavez, Martha Epinesa, Hannah Joe Mills, Violet Zavodnik were added to the uh, preseason team. Autumn Moffat Korth added to the preseason team for pitchers. They're Love loaded it. again. Love it. They're loaded again. No, you're talking about best teams ever. Come on. Softball consistently Softball. wins the league. They're amazing. They're dominating. The only child continues to crush it for the Salt Lake City Stars as he put up a 21-point, 13-rebound performance last night in the loss to the Stockton Kings. Hopefully he gets a 10-day at some point at least. I mean, we'll he, he's trending that way, right? Yes, he is. Uh, he's, he's definitely capable. ESPN announced the 2022 college baseball coverage plans yesterday, and Beery landed a game on ESPNU at Pepperdine on May 5th. Their season begins on February 18th. That's next Friday, baby. Let's go. Oh, come on. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. BYU Men's Hoops is sitting on its longest regular season conference losing streak in 17 years. The Cougars play at LMU tonight, are favored by seven in Vegas. Tyler, the goal is to win the final five of the regular season, perhaps be a top four seed in Vegas. We'll see. And still have a shot at the NCAA tournament. So, what do you need to see tonight to make you believe that BYU can win the final five regular season games of, of this season? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's the supporting cast around Alex Barcelo. Right. I think A.B., he's he's tough enough and he's he's proven these last few games, even even in the losses. Right. He's still going to score 20 to 25. He's going to show up. Can the supporting cast around him show up and and be there? I, I think another question mark for me is is on the defensive end. The defense was so strong and and so tough the first part of the season. And the last four games, they've slipped up a little bit. Too mm. many, too many points in the paint, too many shots right at the basket. Um, they've got to tighten those things up. So those are those are the things I'd like to see tonight to to really, I don't know, make me more comfortable, Jerem. I think we can ask for more than just a win tonight, by the mm -hmm. way. Let's start there. Okay. I, I think winning isn't enough. It's LMU. They're 9-12. and 12, They're bottom two team in the WCC. If BYU won by one, is that enough? No. No. It's not. B BYU's got to play well because basically – BYU has to avoid a bad loss in four of the last five. You have LMU, mm -hmm. Pepperdine on the road, St. Mary's next week. Only game next week, by the way. BYU can mm -hmm. load up until Saturday. All the resources, all the energy. Yep. Get healthy with T. John Lucas, right? Hopefully he's back tonight after missing Saturday. And then you finish with LMU and Pepperdine at home. That Portland game is not going to be rescheduled, by the way. BYU doesn't, I don't think, want it. They don't need it. It's not going to help them. No. So BYU's got to win by double figures, play well. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see the defense return. BYU has given up 70-plus in four games in a row. By the way, BYU is 4-7 and seven this year when allowing 70 points. Wow. Uh, BYU is 0-5 when allowing 76-plus. If this team doesn't defend, they don't win. Uh, and then I would love to see on offense some flow. Mm -hmm. It's felt pretty stagnant, like a, like a pond that, you know, I prefer a river to a pond. A river is flowing. Fresh water, moving, progressing. Wow. A pond it can be murky and weird and gross in some area. You know what I mean? Yep. Have you been to the Mona Pond, by the way? <laughs> it's like a giant tree you can swing off it. Anyone yeah. been to that? It's pretty fun. Anyway, I've I would heard, like to I've see heard some stories. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see some flow on offense. Yeah. That dribble handoff offense. They like to get to the second side and third side because they get the defense moving. I would like to see a little more flow, a little more variation off that. Yeah. And maybe I, I'm not saying they have to abandon that completely. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's more variations on that that uh, lead to more success. What are you seeing, I guess, on yeah. offense specifically that BYU can do better? Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way, Jerem. I think, you know, analytics will tell you that moving the ball side to side in a possession and getting down to that the last 10 or so seconds, right, leads to, to really good offensive efficiency, right? And I... Pope is a very analytics driven coach and and so I think that that plays into why they you know have the style that they have I'm I'm super biased because of the way I played and and you know the way coach Rose wanted to play it's get the ball out of the hoop and we're racing the ball up the court trying to find something quick before the defense can get set and so you know I think 
BYU now can come up with a, a blend of that, right? And and it can lead to some better flow in, in their offensive game and give guys confidence, right? You see the ball go through the hoop a couple of times, get a couple of easy layups in transition. Now you now you settle down and uh, and get into the flow in the half court offense and, and things open up. That that's the way I love to play and and that's what I'm hoping to see with uh, some of these guys tonight. BYU's got to win the final five to feel like it has a chance at the NCAA tournament. I I don't really see a scenario where BYU wins four or five. Pick any of those losses, even if it's mm-hmm. you know in Moraga and you win the four you're supposed to. And BYU's not supposed to win in Moraga. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to upset St. Mary's there, even though they beat them here convincingly. Right. That was that was a different BYU team. <laughs> BYU's in a different phase of the season. Yeah. To go into the uh, WCC tournament and not be in the top four feels like is probably going to be on the outside looking in in the bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, right now, BYU's in. Right now, BYU has, what, nine quad one and two wins? Normally, I would feel like BYU's totally in. <laughs> so I'm trying not to be a prisoner of the moment mm-hmm. with the four-game losing streak because Lenardi's like, no, they're still in. But they're just barely in. That's the issue, Ty. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's, th- this is the least comfortable we have felt about BYU in the NCAA tournament all year. Yeah. Because remember, BYU beats Oregon. They're 12th. They're mm-hmm. What was BYU like a four or five seed? You they know, were way up there. I know. And now we're like, you know what we'd take right now? Dayton. <laughs> we would take Dayton in a first right what? now, no questions asked. Hey, you just summed up basketball though, right there. I mean, <laughs> sports. A, a bas- yeah, sports in general. I mean, the ups and downs of a season. Uh, that's the challenge that lots of teams face, and so I I think BYU is still in, and and I I believe they're going to be there in the NCAA tournament. That's the bigger th- point. Because, yeah, Lenardi's saying they're in, too. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. Not a strong take, right? But the stronger take you just said is, yeah, I believe they'll be there. On yeah. the, the other point to this is I think the committee looks at teams that are playing their best basketball yes. at, at this time so of year. So how about BYU right? wins five in a row and you're doing right. something? Yep. And you I, beat St. Mary's, who's yep. going to be in, too. I, it's all still out there in front of them. If yep. they can finish strong and show well in the, the conference tournament, I, I think they're in, right? They and just show have to well, show. Show well depends what side of the bracket you're on. Yeah. So if you're in Gonzaga's side, it's like, did you lose by 13? <laughs> <laughs> like, if, yeah. if you're on the other side of the bracket, you've probably got to get to the title game. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, let's get to our resume update. Net stays the same at 46. Ken Palm stays the same at 46. Bracketology, 12 seed, third to last team in as of uh, yesterday with one run. Team rankings, down 0.5%. Who cares? Whatever. Um, you know, essentially a quarter there. So, nine quad one and two wins. I swear, I'd have to look this up, but That's that feels good. like the most in the WCC era, that combination. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm off on that. That's a lot. No, the, the resume's there, it's, right? It's just it's just that BYU lost to Santa Clara and Pacific. <laughs> Santa Clara's good though. I'm not I'm not down on that loss. They're tough. Pacific yes. is the one that undid this team. Mm-hmm. San Francisco at home. Hurts. San Francisco's good. But yeah, you Portland's like, are they that good? Like that. We just beat them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, our question of the day. What do you need to see tonight to make you believe BYU can win the final five regular season games? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is The Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Nathan Medin on Instagram. You can weigh in on Facebook and Twitter as well. That, is it Meta? Is, have they changed the name? Yeah. Uh, Weren't they going to change it to Meta or Metaverse? I think it is no? Meta, yeah. Is it? Are we going to change with that? We haven't yet. Nathan Medin on Instagram. BYU uh, An offensive playbook with more variety beyond the screen ball handoff, beyond the arc that we've been playing with all season. Most teams can watch about 10 minutes of our film and shut that down. Before the game even starts. Okay. <laughs> now, here's I want to make this point. If BYU just completely abandoned its offense, that is the biggest red flag of panic ever. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that. No. You just have to have variations off that. Right. You, and, and you're playing. Now, BYU's playing LMU for the first time. LMU hasn't seen it in person. Mm-hmm. So th- th- there's nuance to that. You know, in two weeks when they play, there'll be all these adjustments. Yeah. But what, what would you do at this juncture of the season? you know, midway through February, whatever, where it's like teams kind of know what you're doing. So how do you adjust? It is a good point. I mean, especially in conference, like teams know how you want to play. They know the spots on the floor you're trying to get to. Let me guess, Tyler Adams wants a mid-range jumper. Yep, yep. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I, I was getting to a play and the guy guarding me is like, 
okay, you're going to come off this screen and you're going to, you're going to get a shot on that elbow. I already know. I'm and like, then you be- were like, and I'm still going to make it on your head. No, well, a couple of times I'm like, okay, let's see if you can stop it. <laughs> right. Let's, let's see here. What's going to happen. And they didn't now, but teams know exactly what you're doing and it's a good point. Right. And, and we've seen that the last three or four games, right. Mm-hmm. They know they're going to go back and forth. And that's where Coach Pope talks about playing with force, get, still getting to where you want on mm. the floor. And But I'm, I'm with you. I, I want to see some variation. I want to see them get some easy buckets in a different way. Okay, BYU and LMU coming up tonight. Big game for the Cougs. Got to win. Come on. Got to win. Come on. Let's go. Okay. What's coming up, Ty? Okay, uh, coming up, we react to comments on Joe Namath. Uh, he talks about Zach Wilson. Okay, this is a little weird. Let's talk about it. Gregor Bell joins us to preview BYU and LMU on a game day. Can the Cougs right the ship tonight? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. ups and downs of elite young gymnasts and an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU at LMU Men's Hoops tonight. Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio begins at 10 Eastern time. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Jeremy Jordan alongside the all-time leading scorer in BYU history and my countdown to tip off, homie in crime, Tyler Haas. We now go to the City of Ames, Los Angeles, where Gregor Bell, the voice of the Cougars, now joins us to preview the matchup between the Cougars and the Leones. What's up, Greg? How you doing, man? Morning, Jerem. Morning, Tyler. Hey, Great Greg. to be with you both. Okay, we're stoked for this game day because uh, obviously the final five regular season games matter a ton. Uh, how you feeling about this situation, Greg, given the last four games have not gone well, but BYU with a chance to ride the ship starting tonight? Yeah, you know, it's been a, it's been a good series for BYU. The Cougs have won 15 of the last 16 against LMU and the Lions aren't coming in on any kind of roll. Uh, they've lost five straight. Uh, Pacific had lost seven straight. Let's keep that in mind. They were on a losing streak too. And we're kind of desperate uh, to get that win against BYU, which they did tonight. We have two equally desperate teams as BYU looks to prevent a five game regular season losing streak for the first time in 24 years. That's a long time. Uh, that was Mark Durant and I, that was our first season together. Whoa. Uh, so we're, we're in our 25th season together right now in our first season together. That was the last year that BYU had a five game regular season losing streak. So it's time to end this right now. And, uh, and so BYU and LMU, 
Uh, two teams just, you know, scratching and clawing for success at this point. Uh, of course, the stakes are much greater for BYU than LMU. I mean, they, they, they've had a sub-500 season. Postseason's not a thing. BYU's trying to stay in the bracket. So uh, the Cougars will be highly motivated to get this one back on the winning track and hopefully finish this season with a flourish because the schedule opens up for BYU right now. For the last five are against the ninth and 10th place teams in the West Coast Conference. And, of course, the one in the middle of the big game we'll probably talk about or allude to a little bit. That St. Mary's game looms particularly large as BYU looks for one more resume boost to that postseason portfolio. Yeah, I'm with you, Greg. You know, I, I still feel like BYU has a lot to play for. Do you think tonight is about just winning the game or is it more in how they win and, and uh, the style of, of their win? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Al Davis mode on this one. Just win, baby. Uh, got to gotta get the dub, however yeah. it happens. It's life on the road and in, in, in conference play. And, and the WCC is, it's, it's kind of silly to talk about sometimes because of how dominant Gonzaga is right now. They're laying waste to the entire league. So could both things be true? Could the league be better? And Gonzaga still be a 20 to 30 point a night winner in this league? Yes, I think so. Uh, Portland's a good example of that. Uh, you know, Portland, I, I, I thought after they played BYU, they get somebody at some point, somebody good. And then they knocked off USF the other night and really were maybe a missed free throw away from sweeping uh, USF this season. So, you know, Portland's a good example of how things are picking up. And even LMU, uh, they were picked to finish right behind the big three this year. It was Gonzaga, BYU, St. Mary's, LMU was the fourth place pick. Now, they've underperformed, but the thought was with the talent they had, the coaching they had, you know, they could bring it up a notch. So I think top to bottom, it is a better league. Santa Clara, great evidence to that as well with good coaching. So all that being said, life on the road in the WCC uh, isn't easy for anyone but Gonzaga. All right, Gonzaga wins every game they're supposed to win in this conference. But uh, it's been, uh, you know, full of uh, potholes and pitfalls for a lot of other teams this year. And it's really interesting, Greg, to look at, you know, what seed BYU could be. It's going to be hard to know with Ken Palm adjusted win percentage, which inevitably is going to show up because they aren't going to make up all these games in the last three weeks, how exactly BYU can climb into perhaps the top four there. I don't know about you, but I feel like if BYU goes into Vegas as a five seed, it's going to be real tough to make the NCAA tournament because you're going to be on Gonzaga's side of the bracket. You won't have that kind of quad, you know semifinal quad one opportunity. Um, you would against the Zags, of course, but if you win that, boom, you're in the NCAA tournament. But if you don't, you're in trouble. So it feels like BYU needs to be top four going into Vegas. How, how do you feel about that? Well, BYU's never been lower than three, right? And let, let, let's, let's, let's credit the BYU program for over these 10-plus you know, seasons, never having been lower than a three seed in, in Vegas, never having been uh, worse than third place in this conference over a decade as well. So very consistently performing, BYU's been in the West Coast Conference. Um, you know, Seating right now is so wide open. The only thing we know or think we know is that Gonzaga is a lock at one. But I look at the rest of the, uh, of the teams ahead of BYU or between BYU and Gonzaga in the WCC standings, and here's what I notice. St. Mary's has three games left against Gonzaga, uh, San Francisco, and, and BYU. Sa Santa Clara has two. San Francisco has two. San Diego has three. So all the teams between BYU and Gonzaga have two or three games against the other top-tier teams. BYU has just the one against St. Mary's. So there's room for BYU to move because it has the softer, if you will, schedule down the stretch where the other teams will be knocking each other off a little bit. So let's look at that and realize that BYU has just the one top-tier game left and other teams have to do a little uh, tougher sledding down the stretch. So there's some room to move with BYU's seating. Now the flip side of that is, if the ninth and 10th place teams BYU's facing twice each, LMU and Pepperdine kind of stay where they are, BYU's not going to get as much bang for the buck with the adjusted win percentage as it would playing those other teams. So that's what makes it so uncertain. Having said all of that, you know, BYU's had these experiences in Vegas where they play their first game against a team that's had one or two games already. And oftentimes those teams having played one or two games give BYU a great game or win that game. And so maybe, you know, a different perspective for BYU this time around, if they don't reach that two or three, could be beneficial and, and that let BYU can get on kind of a kind of a roll, kind of a grind back in the old Mountain West days where you were guaranteed, you know, to play two or three games. There wasn't there weren't double and triple buys. That kind of gets you in that tournament mode. And I know Ty, you probably loved uh, you know, that that tournament vibe of going in and 
and kind of laying it out there and say, let's let's go win three and win a title. It didn't happen that way, but there was that real um, you know, kind of motivation of knowing you have multiple games in a very short span of time. And that's kind of fun to think about too. Yeah, there definitely, there's a sense of urgency, right? In any tournaments, like let's go win this thing. Um, Greg, you've seen a lot of teams covered a lot of basketball games. You know, there's, there's teams that always start out, you know, on fire and have a really good first half of the season and then fall off the second half. Maybe they overperformed. There's injuries, number of reasons, but I don't, I don't feel like that's the case with this team. I think there, there's obviously some adjustments that need to be made, and they're in a tough stretch right now. But what, in your mind, has changed the last couple of, league, couple of weeks with uh, this team and, and, and specifically these four games? Well, it's it's about efficiency, uh, really, and and I, I look at the assist to turnover number as an indication of how efficiently you're performing. And and in BYU's wins this year, they're about 1.3 to one in assist to turnover. And in BYU's losses this year, they're about 0.7 to one. They're almost half as efficient in that particular measure, and that's just one of many. But that that, that kind of indicates where they are right now in terms of flow. Plus, you know, during this four-game skid, they're simply not shooting it well. You know, they're, they're, they're a sub 40% team from the field in this four game losing streak. And in fact, on the year, they're a sub 40% team in all of their losses. So uh, sometimes it's not terribly difficult, you know, to pinpoint a reason, but I will say this, uh, of, of the top eight players in the rotation, let's say, uh, you probably got about half the guys that are performing, you know, kind of at near or above expectation. And you got probably half the guys who are probably below uh, their level of expectations personally and, and externally. So if you can get, you know, those halves to come closer to the middle and meet or bring that bottom half up a little bit, you know, that's where you get BYU playing some of its best basketball, where you're beating Oregon, where you're going to Missouri State and winning that game. They've had great wins uh, because they've got great players. And when those players are closer to the same page in terms of expectation level, that's when BYU's been at its best. It's possible to do what needs to be done here down the stretch. To play. They had to have the players to do it. Coach Pope talks about, you know, reinvention, you know, reinventing this team again. And reinvention rarely happens by putting the exact same pieces back together the exact same way. So we should expect, you know, some kind of modifications here down the stretch to see what they can come up with to get the most out of those guys. And again, getting them approaching, you know, similar levels of expectation and performance. And we'll see what that modification looks like, whether it's the form of certain lineups, like you like you mentioned that possibility, or modifications within the offense and the dribble handoff and the variations of that, which we were talking about. So uh, let's talk about this, Greg. How close is BYU to fixing this thing? Because it is, last week obviously didn't go well against two tournament teams right now. But the week before that, it was a, it was a one-point loss and a three-point loss. And it just felt like it really unraveled despite these close margins. Q4 against Pacific's bad, I know. But how close do you feel like BYU is to correcting this? Yeah, um, the only real black mark you know, was was the Pacific game in this stretch, even though it's been a tough stretch. And yet there was Pacific, right, leading USC by 13 in the second half the other night. Pacific could have it could have maybe should have held on for a win over the number 21 team in the country. So if Pacific's good enough to lead USC on its home floor by 13, you know, you're dealing with a team with some capability. And so even though it's a Q4 loss, it's a team and again speaks to the level of talent the WCC that's come up a little bit. So having you know talked about Pacific being the, the black mark, BYU has a, a you know two Q1s or two two Q2s and a Q1 uh, loss in this four game skid. So they're not terrible losses by metrics, but it's more the cumulative effect of how it's wearing on the team's mentality. And and really, if they just finish those 46 seconds at Santa Clara. You know, we're probably not talking about the state of the program or the state of the team the way we are right now. Um, I almost feel like like that that final 46 seconds at Santa Clara, you know, semi resulted in a in, in a hangover loss on the weekend at Pacific. And then you're back to play two really good teams against USF and Gonzaga. And we know how good both those teams are. So maybe they're 46 seconds away from just being where they thought they would be right now and expected to be. So it's just such a, 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 thin, a, a thin, very narrow margin. Of, of how close they are as opposed to how close they want to be. Uh, I, I think it's still possible to end up where they want to be, like Tyler said back in the NCAA tournament. Just because you've had these four straight losses doesn't take away nine Q1, Q2 wins. That's still a part of your resume. Yeah. That's still who you are. You know, that says tournament team. The current four-game skid 
you know, gives people doubt. But, you know, four-game skids can be overcome. Uh, UCLA and it lost its last four games going into the NCAA tournament this past spring. And we know how that turned out for the Bruins, just to use an example. Or use a BYU example. Last time BYU lost four in a row in the regular season, they played in the NCAA double tournament that season. So it can be done, and this team can turn it around. Yeah, it's wild. That, that nine number with Q1, Q2 just screams turning team, right? It just screams it. Right. But, but uh, we're, you know, we're prisoners of the moment sometimes, or it's fair. Like, the way BYU's trending is, is bad, but if BYU wins the next five or even four of the five, yeah, and, and I want to ask you Vegas. this. Yeah, and let's finish with this. Do you feel like BYU has to win in St. Mary's to be in going into Vegas? Uh, because, yeah, you want the best seed you can get. You want a nice quad one road game. But it just feels like that win is going to really turn the season, perhaps. Well, I, I feel if you if you do finish with five consecutive regular season wins, including a win at St. Mary's, you solidify your spot. Uh, but I don't think it's an imperative because I, I think it's tough to talk about imperatives right now because you just don't know – what's happening on the other side of the bubble. You just don't know who you're competing with yet, right? You, you can't say what it's going to take until you let conference tournament week play out and see what's exactly exactly happening on the bubble and how many at-large bids are, gain, are, are being gained. The nine number is strong, and BYU is going to hang on to that nine Q1, Q2 number. If they were to get to double digits, you know, before Vegas, that is beating St. Mary's, well, I think you're, you're golden at that point. But I don't know that you have to do it. I, I think in, in my back of my mind, I've got 23 as a number. That's a good number to be at before Selection Sunday. That means six more wins. You're at 17 right now, right? So six more wins. You know, it could be four and one to end the regular season, a couple wins in Vegas. Um, I, I like 23 or more as a number that might get BYU where it wants to be. But again, that's kind of speculation, not knowing what's happening with the other teams with whom BYU is competing. And that's a big part of this thing, too, is how many other bubble teams will be as attractive as BYU in that Q1, Q2 category. Yeah, you really wish there wasn't a Q4 loss uh, that that kind of, you know, is going to be the, the in, in maybe some comparison shopping, that Q4 loss might be a difference maker. But all that said, BYU's done enough over the number of games it's played to be strongly considered. And and there has to be consideration too for, you know, the, injure, uh, the injury uh, and, and sickness factor and other things that have kind of contributed to some of these losses BYU's had this year. And those all show up in the, in, in the discussions uh, with the committee. 23 and Me, presented by BYU to the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. Let's hope so. Who knows? Greg, we yeah. appreciate the time. Have a great call tonight in L.A. Thanks, Greg. Always good to be with you guys. Thanks. Have a good one. See Greg Rubel from L.A. You can listen to the broadcast tonight starting at 10 Eastern time with Cougar Pregame Live. Games at 11 Eastern. Let's go. Okay, coming up, Women's Basketball Center Sarah Hampson joins us. She had a great game against Gonzaga. Amazing game. And how soon will it be before BYU gets fined by the Big 12? We'll tell you how. This is BYU Sports Nation. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. sit down to watch TV. It's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. 
if you are watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Men's volleyball wraps up an eight-match homestand with a pair of UC uh, a pair against UC San Diego in a top 15 matchup starting this weekend tomorrow night, 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. The guys getting into the weight room. Did you do pull-ups with chains on when you were player tie? Of course. Yeah, look at this. Davide. Davide is jacked compared to fr- yeah. like look at pictures of him as a freshman. Yeah, he's bulked yeah, up. He's bulked up, man. He's Tyler. I'm Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. We remind you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling a global trade for a growing world. Okay, Texas was fine for storming the court tie after beating Kansas. How many years in the Big 12 until BYU picks up its first fight? First year. <laughs> first year. Come Taking on, down Baylor, Kansas, yeah. and Texas Tech. Let, let's get as many fines as we can. Uh, you know, Tyler Hawes did not speak on behalf of the university. <laughs> Tom Holmes is going to text <laughs> you later. Why, hey, why are you encouraging is, us to get yeah, fined here? Don't quote me on that. Let's no, the, get as many fines as no, possible. No, no, no. Quote Tyler on that. Tyler Hawes wants BYU to get fined. Um, that would be that would be fun to pull off some nice wins. It amazing. would be worth it. And guess what, Ty? BYU is going to be able to afford it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it'll be all well. It's true. Okay. Tyler Algier was invited to the NFL Combine. Should there have been any other invites from BYU? Perhaps James Empey. Um, his PFF that. grades were amazing. He did get hurt. I don't know if that, you know, factored into the invite. Like, he probably couldn't run anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, he was banged up quite a bit. But, yeah, he's probably the only one. I, uh, Neil Powell would have been nice. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure the numbers merited it. But, Neil, yeah. like, Neil, I think, is going to be on at least a practice squad. He's a good yeah. player. Yeah, I think Neil definitely has the talent. I mean, his first three or four games this last year were so tough. I mean, he was that mm-hmm. first go-to receiver. Um, but I can see the James MP argument. I, I could see him sneaking into a roster for sure. Yeah. LMU's head coach Stan Johnson, who's from Taylorsville, and a member of the church, by the way, uh, wrote an apology on the LMU Lions website about how the team has been playing this season. Have you ever seen a coach apologize in a written statement midseason? Yeah, not in a written statement. Yeah, definitely in interviews. Um, definitely taking on on that. I I will say I love the way Coach Pope has handled his little four game losing streak. You know, saying Cougar Nation, bring it on. Like it, you read the mean tweets in, in the yeah. coaches show. <laughs> Like saying, hey, I deserve it. Let's go. Bring, yeah. bring on the heat. That was pretty funny. I've never seen that before. No. But he he's a guy that's very disciplined and like accountability and mm-hmm. preaches all these things in his Yeah, with he his, owns uh, it, right? Yeah, he it's owns extreme it. ownership. That's it's your extreme book. ownership. We read that as an organization here last year. I'm excited for everyone else to do their jobs, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Joe Namath made comments on Zach Wilson saying, I like him. But I don't know how long he's going to last. You'd like for a guy to be 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, back there in the pocket. What do you think of these comments, Jeremy? I think that Joe Namath thinks everyone is Josh Allen. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is not that. Uh, Lamar Jackson's not that. Russell Wilson. Russell not Wilson, my, that's my quarterback, is not that. No. Uh, Joe, this isn't uh, the 60s or even like the 90s, the 2000s, where everyone's Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Um, so... No, the, the, the game is evolved. They protect the quarterback. You don't have to be a big, massive dude. They're going to they're gonna call a bunch of weak flags on the defense. Yeah, I think that's kind of a weak take. I, I mean, yeah, of course. I think anyone would want a 6'7 guy. I mean, bigger, faster, strong. But the game is evolving. And, yeah. and, and, and if you can play, you can play. And Zach has proved this last season that, you know, despite a – a rough up front line. I mean, he did, he outperformed uh, definitely, I think. He was awesome. Yeah. Softball opens the season tonight, was voted to win the West Coast Conference by the coaches. Who's more dominant team in the WCC, Gonzaga men's hoops or BYU softball? <laughs> Uh, you know what? If you strictly look at numbers and championships, you have to put, you have to say BYU softball. They're right in the mix, are they not? They're right there. Twelve in a row, fourteen of the last sixteen, um, and and it's pretty good. Which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Gonzaga hasn't done this. BYU softball has won twelve straight conference championships in four different leagues. 
incredible. Okay. That's domination right Dewey there. Dewey Softball wins the league no matter where they go. Okay, Houston Haymuli did a photo shoot yesterday to remake his dad's Turbo Tongan poster. Will you be buying one of these for your home? I'll probably ask Kevin Haymuli, who works here, for a free one first, his brother. Hey, I want one. How, but, do, how do I get one of those? Yes, I'm excited to see the poster. I've seen some of the pics. They look nice. Look really nice. Okay, women's hoops host Pepperdine tonight on BYU TV after losing their first conference game last week. Will they lose another game until the NCAA tournament? I don't think so. I, I think they're gonna they're gonna finish this season strong and they're they're playing well. Yeah, they had the slip up against uh, Portland, but they're they're due for to finish strong and and that group. I mean, it's a special group of girls and seriously, probably the, arguably the best team we've ever seen come through here. So much talent uh, can shoot the ball. I actually I went to a game. I, That's awesome. I, I will say I went to my first women's basketball game. Took and? my girls. It was incredible. It's so fun. They, Show they up. scored 55 first half points or something. They're, no, they're amazing. Uh, my, my daughter asked me, she said, Dad, do girls play basketball? I said, you know what? We're going to a game. Heck yeah, they yes, do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. absolutely. Yes. They're not going to lose until the NCAA tournament. They're not. No. The Portland game was so. the last one until the NCAA tournament. Let's go. And they may not lose in that tournament. Oh, let's go. Wow. Okay, what's right. coming up, Ty? Okay, coming up, our Double Down predictions for a ball night. Yeah, baby. And Sarah Hampson will be in studio. Her role coming off the bench, how she accepted that, and her performance against Gonzaga and the emotional embrace she got in the locker room. This is BYU Sports Day. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue, a fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realize that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Behind the back, Shaley Gonzalez crossing over fools. That's just a taste of what you'll see tonight as 20th rank women's basketball host Pepperdine, 9 Eastern on BYU TV in the app. By the way, BYU women's hoops, 27 game home win streak. Woo! They are Incredible. hard to beat at home. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B. Jerem and Tyler. Sarah Hampson's here as well. The 6'7", super senior from the women's basketball team. Sarah, how you doing? Great. Happy to be here. It's great to see you. Uh, you were telling us a story during the break about your experience with when Ty said, uh, his daughter said, do girls play basketball? You had the opposite experience. Yeah, growing up, like, we always went to my mom's games and, like, women's sports was a big thing in our house. And so Alan one time asked my dad, hey, do boys play basketball? <laughs> so he had to go to a couple men's games after that, yeah. 
Yeah, so and nice. your mom's one of the all-time greats here. Oh, absolutely. Of course, of course Jen was incredible. Yeah. Um, and and you have another sister on the on the team. Yeah, Heather. Heather, which is awesome. So, and Alan played, I think, with Ty one year. No, with Tej. Yeah. Yeah, with Tj. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's my first. I confused you for your brother moment. Oh, so that means I'm turn. getting old. <laughs> Wait, at what point was it like? Yeah, I like basketball too for you because it's such a big part of your your family's um, sports experience. I don't know. I've been playing basketball since like kindergarten. So I've always enjoyed basketball. Um, there was never like a moment where I was like, if this is also fun, because it was always fun. Mm. Yeah, and I think I think my parents did a good job of like having that balance where it wasn't like too much of a job growing up. And so we didn't like burn out young of just like, this is something we do for fun and for exercise. And just like, it's it's up to us what pace and how much time we put in. And since we're just a competitive family, we put in a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm I'm curious. I mean, you come from such a great family. Love interacting with your parents. I ran into Alan. I think at a at a carnival in the fall. You guys are all just so kind and nice off the floor. I mean, where does the competitive competitiveness and fire come from? Um, on the court. On the court. I think we're we keep it we keep it a little more low key. Like we feel very competitive, but we show it a little differently than most. Yeah. We don't trash talk per se, or get the job done. but we just get the job done, and you know we love to win, and we do what we can to do that. I want to see like a mean moment from you. I just don't <laughs> even know what it looked like. But you're such a nice person. Okay, you guys lost to Portland Thursday. That was probably difficult. Then you're down 15 at halftime in Gonzaga. At Gonzaga. Like what happened in that second half? You guys were unbelievable. We definitely had a turnaround. I think it really showed our team's grit and our perseverance. I feel like we just went to a whole nother level with like our focus, especially on defense. Like our team defense was top notch. Ever the game plan was followed like exactly. We adjusted as needed. The game plan was adjusted when we needed to. Just everyone was doing their role to the best of their ability, and like it just worked out so well. And our de- team is just so gritty that like being down like it doesn't affect us that much. Mm-hmm. So I heard Coach Judkins say that you played your best game ever as a Cougar. Uh, on Saturday at Gonzaga. So what was uh, what was that win like? Oh, it was just so, so exciting. And, like, winning at Gonzaga is just so exciting because we haven't done that very much just as a history, as a program. twice in twice. the WCC, right? Yep, and so, so exciting. And just they're such a great team. And so it's always an amazing challenge and so fun. And those, like, challenging games are, like, my favorite. Like, that's why I came to play. That's why a lot of my team loves to play. It's just, like, we love the challenge. We love the competitiveness. We just love it. This is video that the team put out. And there's a part here where the team really embraces you right here, and you're extremely emotional. Um, walk me through what you were feeling right then. Well, we just had this like amazing win, the super exciting moment, and then I'm just suddenly surprised with like the embrace of my team, and they're all just so excited for me, and just I just feel overwhelmed with just the love and the validation, and I just feel so grateful to be part of this team and for this win, and I just felt so loved in that moment, and I just couldn't couldn't handle it. Let's talk about perhaps some of the genesis of this, because you've been a starter for the majority of your career. This year, you are coming off the bench. Not many players would uh, humbly accept that and be happy and still contribute in the way you have. How have you embraced that role? And, and has it been worth it to you, given how the team's been playing? Absolutely. I'm all in for this team. And so any success that the team gets makes it more and more worth it. I came back to play and to win games, and we are winning games. And I get to still play and be part of this wonderful team. I love these girls, and I feel that they love me. And I just really, it's just so fun to be a part of success. And we're so successful this year. And I knew we would be. I don't know, I'm just super excited to be here and just like grateful that I had this opportunity to come back with this team that is so amazing and going so to, to amazing places. Was that hard? Going from more minutes to less minutes? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like change is challenging, especially going like that kind of change. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think you have to focus on like what you can do with what you have. And I try and make an impact with whatever minutes I get. And that's what I try and focus on. I don't know if they give out a, a sixth man of the year, sixth woman of the year. You should be it. Oh, you should be sure. it, right? Yeah. Let's for go. Sure. Okay, so you, now you guys sit at number 20, 19 and 2. Do you feel like you've gotten the respect you deserve? Should you be ranked higher than, than you guys are? Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell because like, they're basing it off of like our performances, and we did have that slip up against Portland. But 19 and, so and 2. Hard. 19, 19 and 2, and two right? really impressive. Is it a schedule thing, you think? 
but you have played some tough teams. No, we played a bunch of like really good teams. I just don't want to understand why BYU wasn't like 14th. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I'm Do you not guys care? Part of the poll. Uh, it depends on the person on the team. There's, there's a variety <laughs> of people who care. I'm not one who cares yeah. that much. I just want to go to the tournament. It would be awesome if we could host. I don't know if that's much of a possibility now. But... Right. Right. Uh, if you run the table and you sit there at 19 2, there's a shot. There's a chance. I think there's still a chance. To be a top four. And, and even if you are a top four, it doesn't mean you will host. There's questions about Sunday availability and the gym or whatever. I, right. Hotels or whatever. I, there's logistics, right? But the higher the seed you are, the better the matchup will be in the first couple of rounds. That's Absolutely. the key, right? The key for 2011. When you were on your mission in the Philippines going to the Sweet 16 with Jim and Fredette was you play a 14 and you played an 11 because they beat the 6, mm-hmm. right? That matchups matter. But um, now you have Pepperdine tonight, and it's the next thing. So how do you keep this going? I think we need to keep it one game at a time, keep that focus. I think we lost a little bit of that focus against Portland, and so we need to not let that happen again and keep looking one game at a time because every game is important to getting where we want to go. Like you said, like that seeding is important. It will affect how we'll play in the tournament. And so we need to keep that in mind as we go every game and take it. Okay, let's finish with this. What's the best thing about being 6'7"? Um, being able to reach the high shelves. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. It's awesome. It's awesome. That's yeah, great. That's awesome. Okay, Sarah, we appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. And uh, if you can't make it in person, you should. If you haven't been, watch on BYU TV or the app. Come okay, on. good luck tonight. Thank you. Good Thanks, luck. guys. Okay, awesome. What's coming up, Tyler? Okay, coming up, a rising shout-out to the newest BYU doctor. Oh, it's a former athlete. Let's go. Former roommate. Oh, former. that's a tease. Yeah. That's a tease. Double down predictions for tonight. Will Tyler outduel Spencer and I? Chances are no. Definitely. Chances are low. This is BYU Sports Nation. You got a shout there, Tyler. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. So, do you tend to exaggerate or stretch the truth? Um... What type of construction have you done? Every type. Like, name some. Um, you ever been on a roof? Yeah. You ever stripped a roof? Uh, I keep my clothes on. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Oh, I know everything. I know a lot of stuff about about makeup and, and nails. Have you done nail art? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I speak, I speak what I feel is true. Uh, what are you writing? This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America. The official credit union of BYU Athletics. The photographer and the photos, Gideon George getting it done on the plane going to L.A. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV or BYU radio app. Hopefully they look as happy on the way home as they are going. Yes. Right? I I think they will. Yeah, I think they will too. Okay, let's get to some double-down predictions uh, for tonight's BYU at LMU game. Here's how it works. Two predictions. Get a point for each correct one. If you get both, you get an extra point for a possibility of three. I'm up 33 to 18 on Spence. The others that we don't give uh, an every game selection to have six. These are not the others from Lost either. Okay, Tyler, what are your picks, man? Okay, my picks tonight. BYU will hold LMU under 55 points. Okay. 
think if they can do Impressive. that, they, they will win. I, I would hope so. Yep. Right? Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if BYU doesn't score 55 at LMU. Come on. That would be bad, bro. Okay, second, Atiki and Foose will combine for 20 points, 15 rebounds. I think both those guys uh, have, have played well, especially Atiki in, in those four losses. Yes. He kind of came alive. Yeah. And, and I think we need to have him play well and, and, and win. 100%. Right? The last time BYU held a team under 55, St. Mary's. On January 8th, 43 11. Really low scoring. Yep. Okay, my first pick. BYU covers Vegas and Kempom, which is 8 point mm -hmm. 7 points somewhere. BYU's going to win by 9 plus. Okay. Okay. Number two, Cougs make 8 or more threes. They've made 7, 3, and 6 last three games. I think they break out for something more normal. Mm -hmm. Those are low numbers. Yep. Okay. Spencer's picks. No idea if these are Spencer's or the producer's picks. We got a couple last week on producer's picks. Didn't turn them in. Still got points. I have picks. an issue with this. <laughs> Come on, Spencer. BYU will shoot. Okay, Spencer has submitted these, so I'm fine with it. BYU shoot 45% or better as a team in the first half. Okay. Number two, Foos will score in double figures. Hasn't reached double figs in three straight games. Yep. Those are Spencer's picks. Okay. I'm up 15. Is it over is the question. Is it already over? <laughs> It's I don't think it is. Not over till it's over. I don't Jeremy. think it is. Okay. We have a couple more games till it's over. Our question of the day. What do you need to see tonight to make you believe BYU can win the final five games of the regular season? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Cole Bowen on Instagram. A team of confident players on both sides of the floor. Shoot your shots, hustle on defense, and bring back that BYU mojo. I like quantifying those things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I need to see BYU win by 10+. plus. Mm -hmm. You need to see some flow on offense. I think that means BYU's offensive rating is is good. Yeah. Right? It's it's kind of where it was before. I'm trying to remember where that was exactly. But, yeah, yeah we need to see that flow and see that confident. When BYU plays confident, they need some shots to go down to do that. Uh, it's going to be a good thing tonight. Yeah, I think that's been, a, you know, a big thing that's been missing and really evident in watching these these last you know two games I, I would say against San Francisco and and Gonzaga there was no confidence the trust wasn't there yeah guys were questioning guys were guessing and and losses will do that to you whether you mm -hmm. deserve to win or not they'll make you question they'll make you doubt and and coach Pope has has talked about these things that that's our challenge is to turn inward and trust each other more come mm -hmm. together more Right, because I mean, you you start looking for answers, and and if you start talking to family and friends, and I mean, every everybody Social. feels like they have the answer yep. to, to this thing. Yep. But really, they need to turn inside and and trust each other more. So, but I think that's where the confidence will come from is is trusting each other. Today's rise and shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Our uh, thanks to Joanne Hayden for enunciation pronunciation help. For real, we really appreciate it. For real. Uh, Yelly Childs, another double double. Let's go. He's playing great. And how about your boy Skyler Halford? Come on, who helped shave my head on this very Come program. On, Sky, he tweeted, Great "This time. is a culmination of work. This is a couple days ago, since 2016, when I decided to go down the route to get my clinical doctorate for physical therapy. The wait is over. I passed my license. Uh, sorry, licensure exam, exam, and I'm officially Doctor Halford. Doctor Halford. How about that? I think that's what we're gonna have to refer to him as <laughs> from now on. From now on, the shooting doctor too." Our thanks to today's guests, Greg Rubel and Sarah Hampton. Okay. Uh, sorry to Dennis Pitta again. Yeah, no time for Dennis. Sorry. No, no time. For Tyler, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Danny Kubik. We'll see you tonight for Women's Hoops on BYU TV. Men's Hoops on BYU Radio. Go Cougs! Go Cougs! <laughs>